I, I personally love the kettlebell. Um, I've been through a variety of different, you know, strength training methods, performance training methods, and um, the kettlebell has been a unique experience, uh, more of, out of intrigue than anything else. And the way that I felt that it influenced my body and, and how I progressed my own strength pattern, my stability and, and, um, and movement is it, it somewhat humbled me a little bit right out of the gate. And I think the SFG process we talk about with a lot of our clinicians is to have them experience the, the process, less of the certification, but more like let the, let the kettlebell teach you some things about skill acquisition and um, moving your body in such a way that you have to kind of stabilize this implement that can be so manipulative around your body, either in one hand or both hands or above your head, bottoms up to offer a, a reactive perturbation. Like there's a lot of possibilities with the kettlebell, which I think fits, like Tony said, in our rehab bridge between the pain segment to the performance segment. And, and there's a place in performance, but I, you know, I think it really fits nicely into what we want to achieve with clients on reloading their body. I think the stability piece that you mentioned is kind of really the key. That's, that's the missing piece in many other forms of strength training, the missing piece in, in most forms of rehab. And we've talked about this on previous episodes as stability being something that we focus on heavily with, with holds. We've talked about these duration holds. We have a whole episode where we talk for multiple minutes on this, this duration hold idea. And we've talked about getting towards this version of 60 seconds of holding and many physiological benefits and many other benefits. But I think the kettlebell lends itself nicely to those holds into those reactive holds and that reactive stability that we really have a hard time creating, I think, in other ways. So I think it forces a couple of things to turn on that we have a hard time turning on with, with other implements. And we, we had another episode, again, where we talked about internal versus external cues, or that was one of our what the fuck, right? Internal or external cues. Mm -hmm. The kettlebell is a perfect external cue because if you load it in certain ways, so if we rack it on one side or if we rack it in two ways, you mentioned, like when we do a squat, that forces your stomach to turn on. The hardest thing that you can get somebody to do when they go through a squat pattern is make their stomach turn on. And so you see this, this lumbar spine folding at the bottom with a, with a axial yeah. load on top. That's a recipe for a disaster, yeah. right? You put a kettlebell in front and that forces stability in the midsection. We put the kettlebell upside down or we put it over our head that forces stability in the rotator cuff and the shoulder girdle in ways we can't really create with tubing or two pound weights or yep. um, dumbbells, I think the piggyback onto that is that it's self-limiting too. One of the best things about the kettlebell is it's completely self-limiting. You have to hold it in one hand or two hands, and if you can't pick it up from the ground, or you can't hold it in a racked position and squat with it without it beating you to the floor, then you know your limitation. There's no cheating around it. You can't lay on a bench and put safety bars around you. You can't cheat with some r random movement pattern by putting something on your back. Um, you can't compensate with your movement pattern in any way because it really exposes vulnerabilities about how you move as an individual and then those are the things you identify as the clinician or the rehab specialist to um, to attack for that that person you're working with and so in that respect it, it's very much three-dimensional as opposed to yes. some other things that end up being a little bit more one or two mm -hmm. planes of movement but i think what we've where we've used it and, and found the biggest value as you guys have all said is, is really in the fact that it forces you to control it from the from the beginning to the end you know you can't start it in a squat rack as you mentioned you got to pick it up from the ground you got to control it and so we use it in many different ways to establish control in different body parts. You know, we look at we look at doing that through the shoulder and the shoulder girdle. We look at doing it through the trunk, and then also uh, even down to the lower extremities. We look at coming up from maybe like a get up position from a from a split stance, uh, from a split lunge position up to to a tall uh, standing position. So I think some of our some of our favorite shoulder progressions, you know, can be simple. Where again, we talk about isometric holds and kind of building that endurance in those holds for sixty seconds, and that could be in the form of a carry. You know, it could be it could be suitcase carry, it could be rack carry, it could be overhead carry, and then of course you bring up the bottoms up component, which which Evan was mentioning. You know, we talk we use PNF a lot early on in our process for manual therapy and manual resistance and building strength in different planes. And it's a bit of reactive strength, and I think when you go bottoms up with the kettlebell, you get you get that same response, and you can take that to the shoulder, and then you can really bring that to the trunk. I remember we had. We had a sprinter early on when we, we were started working together again, and uh, we started really bringing the kettlebell into the mix. And you know, she uh, she was insanely insanely fast. ACL reconstructions coming off her ACL. Uh, she's six months out or so. We were squatting and such. She had started to have a little bit of back stuff as we were kind of progressing her back to back to sport and getting back in the mix. Her having some little back pain and stuff. So I was working with Russ and like, what do you think we do here? And he said, let's do a uh, single arm bottom of a kettlebell squat. 
and uh, this is a strong athlete, like one of the fastest uh, people in her sport, um, in her in her in the in the division, and you know, Division One NCAA. She's very very fast. And uh, after like five reps, she laid down on the ground. She's like, "Oh my god! Like my abs are just on fire." And it's like she, I'd never felt like this before. And it was is an interesting stimulus, and we didn't say a word about you know. Yeah, transverse abdominis or you know tighten yeah. your abs or any internal cues or any of that stuff. Yeah.